We are live. I got the notification. That's how you I get know a notification. You're doing your job. I don't. I don't. I don't get a notification. I have this for you listening. I say that every time because when I click the button that says "Go Live" on custom streaming service, there's this long bar that like Zoom says, "All right, we're going live," and it's just like slowly filling up. It's like a five second bar. So I literally don't know when we go live and no, I, I feel like it. an idiot. And I've figured out over time that it's not exactly at the end of the bar filling up. It's like somewhere in between. It's really, it's a really stupid process. It's really like a flip of a switch, not a bar progress bar filling up. But anyway, welcome back. This is episode 38 of the morning brushback. I'm Dan Blewett. Bobby Stevens is here. How are you, sir? I'm great. It's a chipper, great it's a morning. chipper morning. I've gotten a little more sleep than normal, which is good. I just like gotten to bed better ish so that's always lovely no fireworks going off uh there were a lot of fireworks and my favorite thing on twitter this past week was i don't know if you saw this but the likeness everyone was saying that the world is now blade runner because there was this like really hot someone was on like a, either a uh, um a skyscraper or something and they were overlooking la at night and all you could see was everyone shooting off illegal fireworks. It was like burst, 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 like all these different colors all <laughs> over. And it literally matches the intro scene from the original Blade Runner when they're like scanning over the city and you see like those fire bursts coming out of the, I guess it's like vent gases or something exploding. And I'm everyone's like, it's, right fi now. It's, it's, it's finally come. It's Blade Runner. I thought of that was just like a great, great mention, whoever saw that. And I just loved it because Blade Runner is one of my, I would say it's one of my favorite movies. And um, Never I really enjoyed the, the new ones, but I thought that was pretty fun. And there were a lot of people just shooting off fireworks in uh, in DC, just in the street. It's like, all right, which is fine, but that's definitely how you burn like houses down and stuff. It looks like an it looks like a like a war zone. There's just they're going off it's, everywhere it's, in that. It's video. crazy. Yeah, you should tweet this on the uh, live stream. So if you're out there on YouTube or Twitter, thanks for being here. We're going to be, uh, again, I'll be in the comments like I always am on YouTube. Leave one for us on Periscope. Uh, looks like we got a guest lined up for Friday, which is Dan Savet, um, former pro guy, works for Prep Baseball Report, has a really good message on recruiting, tons of stuff like that. So looking forward to a good guest on Friday. Um, we have a lot of topics to cover today, none related to hitting Twitter, which I'm, I'm, very happy about mm, we'll get back to hitting twitter so let's start off on my other podcast which if you're unfamiliar i do i've revived my dear baseball gods podcast i do that once a week it's really short it's just 15 minutes kind of topical i discussed this little twitter conversation that was happening where a uh, tournament company mentioned parent they basically just tweeted parents giving your kids like a gatorade or drink during the game is a bad look and then a bunch of coaches kind of like went off about it and they're like, oh, this is ridiculous. Like, it's not a big deal, which I agree with. Uh, but I also do think it's a little bit of an un unnecessary thing that keeps being done. Bobby, where do you fall on this? Is it okay for a parent to give their kid a Gatorade during the game? Uh, well, we were talking about it right before we got on air. It's, it's how you give your kid the Gatorade. Yeah, let's go <laughs> into the technique. It sounds crazy. The mechanics, the mechanics are crucial. You need, you need to have good form. Um, it depends, honestly, the timing of it depends a lot on what, what is, are you bringing the Gatorade because something just happened with your son or daughter and you need, you feel the need that to, to say something to them, or is it just hot out and they waved their empty Gatorade at you and you brought it over and you walked away. Uh, we do have a rule with all of my time, my teams that once you give your son or daughter to the coaches an hour before the game there the coaches are responsible for them for the whole game up through the post game meeting no parents by the dugout no don't come by the dugout to talk to the coaches or players it just makes it easier that's good why do you why do you have that rule it just makes it easier for the coaches not to have to worry about it you know a kid strikes out and their dad is behind the dugout giving them tips or just a, basically another voice to distract and it's hard enough to keep the kids engaged let alone when their parents are giving them messages outside from the dugout. So I, we just put that rule in place. Obviously parents come to the dugout and give their kids Gatorade, whatever, if they need something else, I don't know what else they would need if they forgot batting gloves in the car, you know, also age would be inappropriate. 
uh, addition to this is the kid nine years old where he's probably more forgetful than the kid who's 17 years old who should be bringing all of this stuff into the dugout not communicating going outside the dugout to the parents just to whatever seek another voice during the game but it definitely matter matters when you bring your son the gatorade in the dugout <laughs> this is there is str- so strategy stupid involved. That, it's so stupid that we're talking about this yeah it's strategy involved. It was this was tweeted out for those of you that are listening by at RBI tournaments. It says parents, your kid is capable of taking his own drinks to the dugout. Dugout deliveries are a bad look. Yeah, which I agree with. I mean, so my point, which I I discuss on my podcast, is it's always a good thing to to let your kids be responsible for their own stuff. And like we spelled that out as a policy for my academies. I specifically brought up the drinks and all that stuff. I'm like, look, if your kid needs eight Gatorades, pack him a cooler with eight Gatorades in it. It's really easy. Like it, that's just, like, that's just what you do. Put your sunscreen in it, put the granola bar they need, whatever it is, just like make sure they have enough to get through a game. It's two, it's two hours. Like just, I mean, it's not that hard. And I think for players, the more they start to separate from their parents, like, like you said, when you're at the field, you're with your coaches and you're responsible for your own stuff. Hey, like, obviously we're not going to let a kid, die of heat stroke because he didn't pack enough gatorades like you know there were exceptions to this rule for sure we're not i'm not an insane person but it's just like look dude john little johnny pack a little cooler they're 10 bucks you pick one up at walmart fill with ice have everything you need in the dugout and be a grown-up about it like that's it you know and yeah if they're eight or ten maybe it's a little different that's fine but if you're 16 pack your like pack your own stuff it just it's just easy it just shows that you're being a grown-up Right. And again, I think the thing that I'm, I'm sure it's a scary world because we've talked about this a bunch, like all the stuff that gets you crossed off the scouts list. So like parents don't don't pick up your kid's baseball bag and carry to the car. That actually does get you crossed off lists because like, oh, this kid's soft. He's like, you know, mom yeah. and daddy are taking care of all of this stuff for him. So I get that it can feel like kind of like a landmine or like a, a minefield with some of this stuff. You can't do anything. But obviously, like the easiest thing to do as a parent is exactly what you said, which is just like when you get to the field, your kid's got all the stuff he needs. Just let him go be with his team. That's the easiest thing you can do. And then be a normal citizen in the, in the bleachers, have fun, cheer the team on, you know, whatever, but like, let them be with their team. Just as if it was college baseball, like you're not going to be in the dugout. You're not gonna be sticking your head in the dugout, just treat it the same way and then go get ice cream after. But, uh, so I get that it could be like a, it can feel like a minefield where, I need to know all these things that are to get my kid crossed off the list. Giving them a Gatorade is not one of them. It's not going to get them crossed off a list, but it's just like, eh, like that should probably doesn't need to exist. Just like pack them with the stuff they need and let it be that, you know? So I agree that it's a like, I bad look sounds a little harsh. It's just an unnecessary thing to do. That's how I would phrase it. That's all. If I, it's a, his age, his age matters a ton. One, because if he's 10, if he's getting crossed off lists at, at 10, I want to know the tournaments you're going to because there's nobody there watching that matters in their baseball career. It's just the, it's just yeah. family. There's nothing to get crossed off from. No. Yeah. Well, and the same but thing, like that's your parents. Hey, you forgot your cooler of Gatorades. Like, you know, as they're scampering off of the dugout, it can still just be the same thing, whether they're 10 or 16, just pack them with what they need. And if they need something, you know, they'll get but it. But I mean, if this, like the people tweeting that are, 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 uh, agree with this tweet, I guess, are college coaches that are looking for reasons to cross you off a list. Like they're looking for, okay, the starting, like both starting pitchers throw 88 miles an hour. One of them's dad keeps bringing them Gatorades mid game. And one of them doesn't, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but they are looking for a reason to weed out guys that they may not want on their roster. So if this is one of the things you just have to be conscious of it. Yeah, again, it's just easier, easiest as a parent just to err on the side of just they're with their team now. I don't I don't have anything to do, which should be nice, right? Just sit in the bleachers and just BS with the parents. But, yeah, I mean, most of the coaches in that thread were they're like, look, we're not going to cross a kid off our list who's good because his parents hand him a Gatorade, right. which is fair, which is fair. Um, but you're right. If you had, like, two players who were absolutely identical, then you might be looking for, like, which ones which one's maybe gonna give me more grief in college like from the family and yeah. then that might be one thing that just adds up i again that's something that's so minor that's not gonna be a big deal but 
again, as a parent, I think it's best just to separate, just pack them their stuff and they're off to like summer camp, essentially. You're right. You're in the bleachers, but it's effectively mentally think of it as the same as like you just drove away and dropped them off at camp. You know, you're yeah. in the bleachers in a whole different state. That's just the best way to do it, you know? So anyhow, so let's move on. So Bobby, you put a poll out asking how many games would be played this year in major league baseball. And it is starting to look like a very tenuous situation. People are getting yeah. nervous. Sean, Sean Doolittle spoke out talking about how he got a coronavirus test on Friday, got another test on Sunday, hadn't got his results yet from Friday. And then uh, Rizzo, the GM from the nationals was outspoken about the same thing. Like this testing stuff is a mess and he's get cleaned up. And then apparently so says MLB trade rumors, Rob Man Manfred, like gave an earful about saying that publicly, but it is what it is. It just sounds like it, it, this is all just a joke. It's what it sounds like. Well, I, my, to my poll had four options. How many games will we play this season? Zero, one to 30, 30 to 59, or 60, 60 being the full season. Um, I voted 60. I don't think there's any way they're, they're going to say no to the season. Um, the owners want it. I think it's a, for as outspoken as some of the people are about the testing, you know, I know Nick Markakis just opted out. Who's an interesting, mm -hmm. who's an interesting one to opt out because he does have career milestones like within reach 3000 hits. And he's probably in the last year or two of his career. So that was interesting. I thought I also have some experience with Nick Markakis at the Orioles, but uh, I don't think there's any way they don't play. I really don't. I, it, it's gotten to this point. It's already been an absolute disaster PR wise the last two, three months. They have to play like for the, for the overall sake of baseball and like where their standing is public opinion, they have to play. So I'm at 60. Where do you fall on it? Where did you take my poll? You had to take my poll. No, I was pretty disconnected from the web this weekend. Oh, come on. Um, I, I don't have an opinion. I feel like there could be like a screw this point. I feel like there could definitely be if so many players are getting it that they're just like, screw this. And a couple of teams are just like, we're done. Like this is a, this is, this is it. Obviously it's bigger business than to just like pull the plug that quickly, but I don't know. I could, I could see a scenario which that kind of happens where it's like, look, we tried. There's no fans. Everyone's getting coronavirus. This is a mess veterans are you know i don't know speaking out i wouldn't be surprised if that happened but i would assume at this point that the whole season will get played but i i mean it's just completely speculation i have no any real say in any of this or well obviously i don't have a say but i don't have any privileged information my opinions as invalid as this as this lovely snake plant behind me so that's a good looking plant he's thriving he's thriving so my poll has 92 current votes, 42% of people say zero. So almost a little less than half say. I mean, in two weeks, if a ton of guys are dropping out and a ton of guys have it, that could be very realistic. I mean, yeah, it's just and at a point where you're like, uh, this doesn't seem like it's going to get legs, you know? 28% of people say a full season, 22% say one to 30 games. Um, and 8% say 30 to 59 games. So definitely both ends of the spectrum taking the, the, the majority of the votes. I, I just, I cannot see them not playing and taking more of a PR hit. Like it, it's one thing if, if guys in MLB test positive for it, it's another thing if somebody gets hospitalized and is, and is got, God forbid dies from it and he's an MLB player. I think testing positive for it, I think people will just assume like it's going to happen. Like guys have gotten it. A few guys have gotten it. They're going to quarantine for 14 yeah. days. But if somebody, uh, like obviously if somebody dies from it, I think the season's a total, total goner. But I, I think I think it's gotten to the point where testing That's positive is not, not going to derail happen. Yeah, I don't think it's going to derail what the season is. I mean, independent baseball is playing right now. Um, high school football camps are going on right now with your players. I mean, everything is kind of ramping back up. You're going to assume, you've got to assume some people are going to get it. 
like the normal flu, like you're not going to stop it. People are going to get it. It's just how serious is it? Is it getting, I like the, tw- I guess the, I see a lot of the numbers on Twitter and a lot of like more people are getting it, more people are testing positive, but less people are being hospitalized. So I think the severity of what happens, that's a cute mask, Dan. This is my go-to mask right here. Do I sound is the it, same? My voice sound, punching, punching through it. You sound exactly the same. Is that plaid? It's that plaid. Argyle? My sister sent this to me a long time ago. And this is the only one that like just goes over my ears. So it's way faster. The other one I have, it has to go over my head. And it's very hard to get down there. And then I pull it up. It's the terrible design. It's a very, it's a nice mask, but it's awful. I never wear that one. This is the only one I have. I need to get a new one, but also I never washed this one. So it's probably just a cesspool. Yeah. You're, you're sicker now than you were. I should, I should have thrown it. I assume the germs just dry out every like three days, but that's probably not true. I feel like that's not how science works. Oh, you're the guy who wants to talk about science. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Well, I think the real tragedy is if some employee of the ballpark or wherever gets it and gets really ill, that's where people are going to be like, we're hurting other people. You know what I mean? I think the players who play are less concerned about themselves than probably something like that, where like a really nice old usher or just someone in the front office, whatever it is, like they fall really ill and they're going to be like, they're just, it's going to start to weigh on consciences, I think. But that being right. said, there's a 60 pool player or a 60 player pool of players. That's a lot of players to rotate in if someone gets sick and needs to get, you know, sent home. So it's not like minor leaguers are going to give away their chance to play in the big leagues if they get that shot. So there's no. going to be bodies to go to keep reinforcing if it gets uh, messy. But but yeah, I wonder I wonder what the rules are of adding players to that. Is 60 like a is that a, a set in stone number by MLB is that an arbitrary yeah. number that everyone's just sitting on no that's a number that they have 60 players to put on their pool and then there's like a taxi squad thing which I don't feel like getting it's all the but all can the you details add of it, players like but... can you pick up a guy from indie ball and bring no. him onto your 60 man no. taxi squad so you're no. stuck with also your 60. why would also why would you 60 players a lot of players well, I'm saying if 40 that's of them come down point, with coronavirus 2.4 baseball teams what if 40 of them coming down with coronavirus, like you're plucking indie ball guys for two weeks. I'm in the DC area, guys. I go it's... up there, throw eight, 88 any day, <laughs> as long as you pay for my shoulder surgery the next morning. So. People will watch it too. You don't, don't sell yourself short. People will still come to watch. Yeah. Big spin rate guy. Um, all right. Well, let's move on. I'm tired of talking and thinking about coronavirus. Also wearing that mask on the mic was unpleasant, but it was fine. It was fine. So what's our what's our topic here, Bob? So I went on a little bit of a late night t- Twitter rant, just in a in just literally just private DMs to the morning brush back, so I didn't forget. Uh, Pat Mahomes signs his ten year. Don't it, care. Don't God, care. Not baseball. But I, I don't care. No, I've got a question for you. Is it well, is it a question that I care about? No. Are any questions questions that you care about? No, that's that's a good point. It's a fair a fair point. point, I think. You don't use that phrase as much anymore. But who, what athlete, baseball or other sport, is worth that much money right now that currently has not gotten it? Is there an athlete worth that much money? Like, is that amount of money worth? Is one athlete worth that much money? I don't really know what you're asking because you asked that in such a strange way. But is any athlete? worth that much money that like is it an absurd amount is it a reasonable amount in today's sports landscape is it well he's only guaranteed like 140 million right he's not guaranteed 450 he's only guaranteed 140 i think yeah f- football is different especially with the number of uh like incentives and i think it's i think it goes all the way up to somewhere in the 500 million dollar range with yeah incentives. that seems like a good luck to play 10 years in the nfl so is there a baseball player worth that much money? I know Mike Trout, uh, Mike Trout's gotten it already. Is there somebody on the horizon worth that much money? Are we going to see these $400 million contracts? Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to take a hit probably in the next couple of years, but I also don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I'll move on it's to my what, next it's what, it's what it is. I mean, this whole like thing of like what things are worth, they're just a matter of what people are willing to pay. 
I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's just a marketplace. So you're right, an gonna, entertainer. It's entertainment. Man. It's entertainment services. But like I'll that transition. question, when people get up in arms about it, ultimately, like Patrick Mahomes is the same as Lady Gaga. Like they're entertaining people, and it's what are they? What are people willing to pay for that entertainment? Sports are entertainers. It's a different type of entertainment, but it's entertainers. That's what they are. Oh, yeah. It's you're worth what someone's willing to pay you. I was just wondering if anybody, you know what? I'm going to transition money wise. You seem the, very butthurt by my disinterest in this question. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing out, you know, slam dunk topics here because it's a co host of the year. It's not year. a slam dunk. It's not a slam dunk. Co host of the year here, Dan. I want to talk about Mount Rushmore. How do you feel about Mount Rushmore? I, have you been to Mount Rushmore? Have, you might. You no, might I want to go there. I don't want it. I don't want it chipped off. No, I don't want Mount. I don't. Also, don't care. Like, <laughs> is it? Are people going? First of all, are we, are we in anyone, a fight? Are we having a fight right now? No, I'm. I'm having a fight with the world right now. It, anybody who's upset if by looking at Mount Rushmore needs a hobby. Like, you need a better hobby than to drive to the middle of absolute nowhere. Apologies to anybody listening from South Dakota. Nobody's going there. I don't care what's carved into the side of the mountain. Nobody's the Black going Black Hills. There. Yeah, nobody cares. Like, it, does any? Is it bothering people that much? I I don't know. I, I it's not bothering me. I don't want George Washington's face nose chipped off and replaced with I don't know a, a YouTuber, somebody that everybody likes. I well, obviously. Care. I, I can understand the native Indians perspective that they were basically just massacred and everything stolen from them. You're right. Like that's their perspective. Sure. And this is like, it's like are a big they, F F you just are like they the immortalizing ones, are they that. the ones that are in the, like pushing the take it. Yeah. Take down? Yeah. I didn't see this. I only assume yeah. somebody just complained about it. It, it's a, it was like a, a big scar and a, a you know, trophy essentially on their land that was stolen from them. And so I understand their perspective. However, I don't know what the proper perspective is on like a, essentially a conquered people. And that's not, I mean, I don't like throughout human history, people have invaded other countries and stolen their resources. Like that, that's how the current configuration of the world is today. I mean, isn't it? I mean, the Roman empire grew because they conquered all those different little lands, right? I mean, that's sort of how this has always worked. Um, and so I understand that today's society, we can all voice our opinions on different things. And I can understand that anyone who was at one point conquered, if that's what you would call it, feels marginalized because, yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, but I also don't know, I don't know what the responsibility is of a conqueror. If you call it Americans conquerors of the native Americans, and maybe that's the right term. I'm not a historian. I don't know, but it seems like that seems apt. I don't know. Um, I don't know what, what the sensitivity you're supposed to have towards a conquered people. I don't know. I don't, uh, it's, I'm I... not, I'm not like passing judgment either way. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's a fact that Americans stole their land. Yeah. And we did a lot of horrible things to them. Um, in taking this land and like t stealing America for us. Right. And I don't know what the, I don't know what you owe a conquered people. I just, I genuinely don't. So I get their perspective that that's like a big F you, but at the same time, like Americans conquered their land. And I it don't. was, you know, I don't know. It's, 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 it's an interesting conversation. I actually want to like read up about it. Um, I mean, like I how to company, like, when does... you know, when does yeah. it like what is that is that it like do they want that taken like do the people want that taken out? i have no idea i honestly i don't even i'm not even 100 percent. i understand the the argument or the the discussion on it i don't i didn't see who wrote it or who's pushing it but is that is that like the end all be all like mount rushmore or is that just like the beginning of what may be more uh I don't have an opinion on Mount Rushmore. I it seems like somebody took a lot of time to do that. He did a pretty good job. Those faces resemble the people. I, <laughs> other than that, I don't have an opinion on Mount Rushmore. Like I think the, I think the sculptor did a good job with those faces on the side of a mountain. I yeah. don't really. I, I I I agree. I don't understand. I don't know the. 
I'm not Native American. I don't have a, I don't have any background on the situation of what I obviously know the history of it to a degree, but I don't have any personal uh, history with it. It's just a, it, where does it where like, where is it that the only thing or is, does it going to be more, do they want, are there more, not demand? I yeah, I don't, I don't know. I bad. mean, well, and you start to think of like, okay, well, like say an individual tribe owned that specific part of like, you know, the country, whether it was, I don't know. So say it's just say tribe A owned that part. They probably had to defend it from tribe B and tribe C at some point, right? I mean, Indians used to to war over land, didn't they? I would assume. Sure. And and so it seems like that's not wholly different than warring within the Americans who came, right? And so if your land, um, I mean, knowing that like Indian history was never completely, I mean, nowhere nowhere in human history was any like land peacefully just maintain oh i i was here first so i just have it for the next four thousand years so they had to i'm sure defend their land from other indian tribes and they successfully did so until then the americans took it from them um so i, I guess i don't know what the difference is but again i'm not I, I wouldn't say i'm insensitive to it i just i'm i just don't understand like what is owed as far as like history of conquerors and, and the conquered it's a it's a historical debate i guess but obviously in today's society, we can voice opinions and, and ask for whatever we want. And that's fine. Um, I hope Mount Rushmore stays. I hope it's not seen as a symbol of marginalizing them because I don't think that's what it was intended to do. Maybe it was, I don't know, but it's uh, I don't know. It's an interesting thought. I mean, the Roman empire, I'm sure still has land within it in Rome that maybe belonged to someone else at some point. Well, like the Coliseum, all, all, all these, all these, all these, all these places have to, right? I mean, Russia is huge, um, so I don't know. It's an interesting thought. It's an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I, don't I mean, think I've, that's I've been happen. to Italy, and I've been to the Coliseum, and it's the Coliseum is essentially a shrine to putting people in a cage with lions and letting them try and survive. It's, I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's crazy. The definition now, if, of like. It's old, it's old world sport, quote unquote, like in the arena and entertaining the people, but essentially it was just sending people to die. But yeah, people go, was... I mean, people flock to the Coliseum. It's a interesting historical landmark. And I'm always, I'm on the side of learn from the past. You learn from people that came before you. It, I don't know if taking down Mount Rushmore or statues or anything else, erasing it it doesn't erase the past. Like if something, if something is a, as a shrine to a terrible person, yeah, get rid of it. I mean, mm -hmm. get rid of it. For well, sure. you know, like the stone mountain thing, is that in Georgia? Stone mountain the, is just like, this, there's a mountain yeah, with a, with Georgia a mural. Stones. The guide stones? No stone mountain has just a racist. Um, it was, there's a carving into stone mountain that was done by the KKK essentially. And it was like the KKK's like meeting ground. So that's like, it's not an analog, but it's again, another mural into a mountain that was clearly done by racist people for ra ra racist purposes. So they're calling to get rid of that on Stone Mountain, which makes a lot of sense. Mount Rushmore is not like a, like a mural of showing the desecration of the Indians. And it's not a, it's not, it's by no means that same thing they just it seems like the the sentiment about mount rushmore is you know you scarred the mountain with american history when you took this land from us and it you know i get that they're sore about it but stone mountain i think is probably going to get removed because it was just done by clansmen as like a big screw you to everybody so that one hopefully does come down for sure I just that serves no benefit huh yeah that serves no benefit except just to be hateful Whereas Mount Rushmore, the carvings themselves are not intended to be hateful by any means, right? They're just done on a marginalized people's land. So those two aren't, I wouldn't say the same, but uh, that's what another thing you, that's, that's in the debate. What would you carve? What would you carve in the side of a mountain, Dan? I'd make a sea turtle. Everyone loves sea turtles. What? Yeah. What? A it's sea just like, turtle? Yeah, just be, everyone would just be happy about it. Not, have to put... not No controversy... Just a big just a, loggerhead turtle. Just a just a obscure animal. 
Yeah. Or, uh, I don't know, a mural of Carl Jepson, Jepson's Malort. <laughs> Definitely not that. Yeah, um, Chicago mural. No, Chicago is. Bob, have we talked about my scooter yet? We've talked off air about your scooter, and I'm secretly, I've said it to my wife and, and one other person, how incredibly jealous I am of this scooter. So I don't know <laughs> if I want to talk about it, but I am, I had a one in college, so I'm pretty yeah. jealous of you. You had a 50 mile per hour. That's terrifying. A, a gas powered scooter. Oh, this thing was, it was moving. It was like a motorcycle at, at, by that, at, by those standards. But yeah, I am, I'm, I would love to cruise around. If, if it had like a side buggy, like I could carry sh- stuff in, I'm give it to me. Let's scooter it up. Well, so in DC, they have all, like five different companies of scooters. All the ones that are just sitting on the streets so you can just grab, which the DC Metro is usually great, especially like in the winter when it's cold and like it's by far the best way to do it. But the Metro is way slower now because they have fewer trains because of fewer riders. So it's like a half hour to wait a lot of times just to get on the thing. And then it's slower yeah. than normal. It stops longer. So it just like makes no sense to take the Metro now. So getting around DC, I walk a ton, but I also just sometimes need to get places faster. So um, I take those scooters, but they're like four to $6 per way, which isn't expensive, but they start to add up. So if you go somewhere and come back, it's like 10 to 12 bucks probably if it was like a mile and a half or a little more. So then you're like, okay, this scooter I bought was 440 bucks. I had like a little coupon, so it was like closer to like 420. It's like, all right, that's 10 round trips and I paid for my scooter. It's like a no brainer because I'm certainly going to take 40 trips at some point. So I was like, finally, I just like bought it because it just makes financial sense. If it didn't make financial sense, I would not. I would just take those other ones and whatever. But see, this is where this is your biggest flaw, Dan. You bought it based on some actual logic, whereas mm-hmm, I see mm-hmm, scooter mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I think, sweet, we're buying this thing. I can only use it one time. Well, Let's I was on the it. fence for a long time because I like walking places and it's good exercise. So I didn't want to stop walking places just because I have a scooter. So I wanted to make sure, like, I actually knew my scooter usage when i was like walked out essentially like i'd done enough walking because if you walk everywhere you're walking like two hours a day and it starts to eat into your day a little bit so i started to use them more and i've started to figure out like how i would use it in my routine plus in dc they're metered in the sense that they're well they're limited so they only go 10 miles per hour and like chicago they go up they, they go their full speed so those typically go up to like 18 miles per hour so here in dc they're slower which i think is good for safety because they do get a little zippy but mine does not have those limitations. So I can shoot around at like 14, 15, 16 miles per hour, which is nice because it does cut down. That's a good, I mean, it's a 50% speed increase from the, the ones I'd have to pay for. So, and I can still take the ones I have to pay for if I want to go somewhere and not have to carry my scooter around or if I'm not going to like sit or be indoors where I can like have it with me and not have it stolen. So just made can financial you sense. Can you lock I could buy up? a lock for it, but I doubt that I will. I guess like, I probably it- could. Is it an indoor scooter? Like, can you bring it indoors or is it yeah, I can scooter? fold it. I can fold it in half. It's only 25 pounds. So I can easily carry it or I can like roll it the way it like folds up on the one wheel. So it's pretty versatile, but I don't have, it doesn't have to be my only, like I don't have to find a way to take it everywhere I go. I can just take it when it makes sense and don't take it when it doesn't. It's just like another piece of transportation. It's like the price of one car payment. But for someone who lives in the city, tr- it makes sense. Can you do any tricks on it? Can you drop into a can you drop into a, a half pipe on that thing yet? I'm trying to not have to wear a helmet. I'm trying not to get injured on it, and I'm trying not to break it. Those are my three goals. <laughs> Safety first. Safety first. I try to avoid I avoid everything I can. Very collision averse with just like you know, where the sidewalk's a little wonky, little potholes, little whatever's. I'm just weaving, just weaving. Safety well, first, man. I'll tell you what, some of the some of the people at Harvard could buy a lot of scooters for the cost that they're charging for their online academic year next year. Did you see this this price yeah. tag? Let's let's talk about this. For forty nine thousand six hundred and fifty three dollars is the undergraduate tuition for Harvard University, which will now be taught all online next year, 2020 to 2021 academic year. This number is absolutely ridiculous. 
I don't, is there any other way to describe this number? That number of, that, that cost? $4,000, $4,000 a month for Zoom calls. I can't wrap my head around that. Google is, has all Harvard's information on it. All of it. Whatever you can learn at Harvard, you can learn on the internet. I, I can't, I don't understand. I can't, I can't buy any you need stretch. To calm down. No, I'm pissed off because you know what? Harvard's been smug for too long with their $70,000 price tag. <laughs> They've been smug for too long. Oh yeah. 50 well, grand. People, that's a, that's somebody said, that's a salary for somebody just to sit in front of doing what we're doing right now. This, this I'm, we're going to start charging for this podcast, 50 G's a year to listen to this. I do think this. we should, I do think we should uh, charge for this podcast. No, How much would people be willing to pay? 50 grand, I hope. If you're both well, how many minutes? Grand. It typically goes how many minutes? Ninety 60, minutes. Yeah, no, sixty. Maybe a dollar. Maybe, maybe it's a penny, penny a minute that they listen. That's not bad. A hmm. dollar fifty an episode. If maybe they listen the whole thing. Tier discounts. I can make that mm-hmm. work. We could mm-hmm. we could Patreon mm-hmm. this. I tell you what, it's it's worth more than that undergraduate tuition at Harvard. I tell you that. This is entertaining sometimes. Well, I mean, this just highlights the, the, the way education's broken. There's no way people should pay 50 grand for stupid Zoom education. There's just like no way you should do that. People need to absolutely revolt. That's, it's ridiculous. I think what Harvard's trying to do is be like, well, we're still Harvard and they're kind of like stuck if they're like a sophomore or junior. So let's try to get paid, you know? They can be able to want to just, just transfer, but they should transfer. And the other thing is the ICE, the uh, International, wait, what is it? Um, cust- what does ICE Customs? stand for? Customs Enforcement, know. International Customs Enforcement. I don't Something know. Like but either way, ICE, the people that deport people in the US, they said if you are enrolled in a online only college next year, you have to go home. Your visa is no longer valid. So if you're an exchange student at Harvard, you have to pay your 50 grand from your home country. You can't even stay here. Unless your school is in person, you got to go home. It's crazy. I just, what are you paying for? I isn't, I like, I get it. You pay 50 grand to go to a school. Like that might be the upkeep of all of those buildings and all of that. I, I don't know if schools pay tax though on their land. So that might be another thing. Fit, but you're basically paying $50,000 for a piece of paper that says somebody from Harvard lets you log into their Zoom call. Get the hell out of here. I mean, a Harvard degree is still valuable. However, <laughs> there's no way that that's, that's a worthwhile endeavor. 50 grand for awful, awful Zoom education that people hate. No, no, no way. No. Uh, is it even worth that much money? I mean, I feel like, I feel like very successful people have, no, college is broken. Different... It's it's broken. There's just this bloat of administrators. There's bloat of tenured professors, professors in general. They just need what they need to do is they need to fire a lot of people, and they need to reduce their costs. They're trying to make the pieces fit. They're trying to get their same amount of money to pay all the same people. Whereas in reality, they just need to get rid of a lot of people. And we don't we don't need sorry like we got to cut thirty percent of our professors and our administrators or whatever. And and Harvard needs to be twenty five thousand dollars instead of fifty. That's what all these schools need to do. I mean, it's just it's, um, it's an insane financial investment in not getting an education and just trying to get this piece of paper that means less and less every year. In our like I'm gig baffled. economy, the way you can do things on the web, traditional jobs pay less. La- it's just it's it's asinine. It's just ridiculous. I'm, I'm not actually, to mention like, college athletes, like they're not going to like, what is Harvard going to do with their athletes? Cause they're going to be like, all right, see ya. I'm going to Princeton, go to Yale, go somewhere, but go elsewhere for sure. Well, if they're, if they're not degrees. online or if they're, excuse me, if they're not, um, if they're not on campus, do they just cancel all sports? Like you have to, right? I don't, I don't know what the, yeah, I don't know what the thing is with that. That's hard to, it's possible to know at this point. Uh, it's absurd that that's that is an absurd number obviously harvard's getting out in front so everybody's going to follow suit that high like all the all the ivy leagues there's not gonna be an ivy league that's like oh we're gonna do zoom it's only gonna be like 10 grand this year 
no shot in, in anywhere in the world that's going to happen. Everybody's going to follow suit. They're all going to be, Harvard just happened to be the first one to come out and say it. That, And they're basically saying our, our piece of paper is worth 50 grand and you're going to pay for it. Well, I think what, I mean, I, I haven't been in college in a decade, but obviously college is only a month and a half away or less, I mean, like a month and change away. That's, I think, what's crazy to think about. I didn't even think about the fact that college would be back in session middle of August, you know, late August. So they're just knocking on the door, but screw that. Yeah, don't go back to school. Take a gap year. Put the 50 grand in your pocket. Like what? It just makes no sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> Take, Take a, a gap, gap year. year. You, well, yeah, that's the absolutely the right thing to do. Why would you waste a year of your life? Go do something, get a job, have some fun, whatever, and then go back when college is normal and valuable because it's not either of those things right now. You know, you know what you could do is just you could you can combine your Harvard education with backpacking Europe. Like at, at no point ever could you go to Harvard and also backpack around Europe but since it's on zoom instead of spending 50 grand spend 100 just go to Europe travel a little bit no Dan uh I mean I think that's probably a good way to do it actually because then at least you're getting something life lesson valuable if you're like well I just want to get my Harvard degree quicker than later and I don't care about the cost of it then yeah go do something cool go live in a mountain and like fight bears fight a bear every morning between I classes there i mean you could uh, i for me for me online class was great if i i had a couple in college it was awesome I they also only any. cost a, they, they also only cost a few hundred dollars because i took them at a junior college and i the cre credits transferred over i wasn't paying five g's per credit hour to get uh to get a degree from whatever. I went to Northern Illinois University, the Harvard of the Midwest, some would consider it, but I digress. It's just, <laughs> I'm not paying 50 grand for that piece of paper. I just not, I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Um, so moving on, what's our next topic here, Bob? I mean, I've got a bunch of topics. I don't know what you're interested in. Did you, what'd you do on the fourth, Dan? Let's. I'm, I didn't even uh, ask you. That. I, I saw my family. I ate crustaceans. We had crabs, Maryland tradition. It was lovely. Crabs, pretzels. Um, what else? Was did you it. Old Bay? Did you smother it in Old Bay? Well, you see, you don't know anything about crabs. So crabs are they come literally coated in like a paste because that's what they steam them in. So they throw these crabs in the pot, literally cover them in. And it's actually typically not actual Old Bay. They usually, usually each like crab place makes their own seasoning that's very similar, but it's not actual Old Bay. I'm sure it's like way more expensive to buy Old Bay brand, but that's, they come with like, you could scrape it like it's just mud off of it. So and then you like, as you're picking the crab, you like, yeah, it doesn't flavor that much, but basically as you're picking the crab, you'll just like take some of the meat and you like scrape it on the shell and then eat it. So it's, there, there's such an abundance of it that it, it's on your hands, like Old Bay is everywhere. So it just like becomes part of the way you eat them, essentially. It seems very sloppy. It is. It's a great, like, it's a great 4th of July food because it's just a slow food to eat. Like, I think I only ate like maybe eight crabs. When I was a kid, I'd try to eat like two dozen if I could. But A, they're expensive. <laughs> we got mediums because we're just like not huge eaters anymore. We got mediums and they're like six, they're like 75 bucks a dozen. Got three dozen for our family, for just the four of us. Uh, my sister and, and her family didn't join, but um, I mean, a, like if you get like a bushel of jumbos, they're like twelve dollars a crab, which is crazy. I mean, they're a, a bushel a crab. of jumbos. Oh, well, they God. measure them in by the dozen or by the bushel or half bushel. So a bushel is just like a big basket essentially. So if you have a bushel of jumbo crabs, there's just gonna be less of them in there than a bushel of mediums. So. Um, just you have to do more picking for the smaller ones, but I mean, it was, it was great. And we, uh, actually it was funny. My dad's going to do this thing. Um, I, it's some little charity event where they go do batting practice and like they get points or hitting it out of the infield or whatever. So my dad wanted to go to the batting cages and he was, he wasn't a baseball player. Mm -hmm. So we went to the batting cages and I gave him some rudimentary pointers 
and uh, then we hit golf balls as well, which I've never done any of that with my family, which was interesting. So my brother, my mom, my dad, me, we were all in the batting cage for a little bit. And then we hit some golf balls and uh, I can shockingly hit the ball kind of straight. It's really weird. Just like with the crappy driver that they gave me, but I just like, don't care about golf. It's, it's half the battle hitting the ball straight. It's like gotten, I don't know. I, I did, I went to the driving range as a kid so it was fun. But if I go to Top Golf, I like do okay. I can like hit it reasonably straight. I can hit it like, I don't know how far I can hit it. Probably like 250, but I don't try super hard. And I think I have like a good club and like start to be good at it. But it was pretty fun. It's something I hadn't really done with my, my family in a long time. So it's a good, uh, it's a good Saturday catching up with them. I haven't seen them much. So that was my fourth, but it was like classic fourth, super hot. It's like 90, 95 degrees, muggy. Oh, yeah. You were eating a bushel of crabs. Joey Chestnut ate 75 hot dogs and buns at the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Man, I get, I, I get greatness. Like if you want to be great in whatever it is that you do, go for it. But it's just a disgusting, it's a disgusting thing. That whole thing is just disgust. It's vile. I'm like, yeah, not, just not into it. It's, it's disgusting. Well, how many hot dogs do you think you could eat? I mean, are we talking dipping them in water and shoving them down my face? Or are we talking about like, just like eating hot dogs? Because like, when I was in college, do, when I was you in don't college, do half ass, Dan. You're gonna do it. You go. Full I'm not go. dipping any bread and meat in water like that. I, I understand that's the method. I completely get it. But this, that's just it's vile. If I'm at a barbecue and I'm 22 years old, I could certainly eat eight hot dogs. Probably 12. Eight if I really wanted dogs. to, for sure. Are you saying that's high or low? It seems like an excessive amount. Like if you're if you come to a barbecue I host and you and you house eight hot dogs, I'm I'm looking at you cross-eyed. First of all, I'm 34 now. I would eat if I was at a barbecue. I'd probably eat like well, I could easily eat four. I mean, that's like not even that much volume of food over a couple <laughs> hour period. I could easily eat six today for sure. I wouldn't sit down and do that though because I'm a normal person. Like I would sit down and have like two hot dogs and have some corn and like eat like. Do but when I was in college, I was eating like almost six thousand calories a day, just like crushing it in the gym and eating so much food. Like eating eight hot dogs was like no problem back then. All right, I mean, so over the first four, I'm like just getting started. I mean, easy. And I like I like hot dogs. Like pretty kind of kind of burnt a little bit. Oh, getting yeah. pretty charred. Getting pretty charred. Well, are you are you, are you steaming them? Are you boiling them? Are you on the grill? No, on, on the grill. I'm a grill guy. I want the grill. Do you cut your hot dog them. in half? Do you flatten it? It's not a it's not a bad tactic, but no, I don't. I like to I usually like to get the ones that will like kind of like expand, like the ballpark ones that'll like get bigger as they get charred or whatever. But I'm a big hot dog fan. I just like literally never eat them anymore. But they were always my like more so than like a hamburger. They're my, like my backyard food. I just like never. I don't have a grill. And I never like. I, why would I go like as a single dude? Why would I go? buy a pack of hot dogs and then go up to my <laughs> rooftop of my building and like just make hot dogs at random you know what i mean it's like a you get it's a social it's a social food at that point well how about how about they used to sell the hot dogs in the eight eight hot dog package but the buns in the six bun package oh that's just, so annoying uh, good point good point sir that's a ridiculous thing is it not is it not irritated like your 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 sensibilities when you're looking at the package of hot dogs and then the buns, like, what are you going to do with extra four buns? Then yeah, you gotta, well, it, it evens out. Sense. If you get to four, you get to four, six packs of buns and that's 24. And then you get three, eight packs of hot dogs. So, but then you need multiple people to take that down. That's like a, you gotta have like a party. But yeah, yeah I agree. But to, I agree. Who's, who's met, like you, somebody got in a fight a long time ago, the bun people and just said, screw you guys. We're we're doing six. We're not gonna we're not gonna cater to your eight hot dog packaging. Yeah, there's a very big very big disconnect there. Um, but how you have an ant? How many in ten minutes? How many hot dogs could you eat? Right now, there's, there's money on the line. There's a there's a hundred grand on the line. I don't care uh, what your method is. My guess is probably ten. I don't know how accurate that is today because I, I could never eat them. I still can eat a lot of food if I want to. 
I'm guessing 10, but I could be wrong. It could be, it could be six, could be eight out of 10 minutes. Not that long of a time, but probably 10. I'm housing at least 20 hot dogs. Put money on the line. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely not getting to 20 for sure. I oh, know for put, a fact that's not happening. Put money on the line. Give me the biggest cup of water you could find. Oh, I'm eating those hot dogs. I'm crushing those hot dogs. All right, let's move on. This is uh, that contest is just, it's just, like I said, vile is the way to, is the <laughs> overarching term. Fine, to, we'll move to describe it. We're running through my list of. That's what we're supposed topics. to do. You run through the list of topics, and then you end the, and then you end the podcast. Well, I want to, I want to oh, stay on the fourth. Of, I want to stay on the, for like holidays in general. Uh, I have rank your favorite holidays as a topic, but just, do you have a favorite holiday? Is Fourth of July on the top of the list? Summer holidays, I feel like, get a little bit of an edge. Fourth of July nice is definitely my favorite holiday. Because I don't know, Thanksgiving's all right, Christmas is all right, Easter's not a holiday for me. Um, what other holidays are there? Arbor Columbus Day, Day. <laughs> Arbor Day. Uh, some yeah, some people know. like a good Labor Day, Memorial Day if you have veterans in the family. I never had those days off. I still like kind of don't really because I don't technic. I'm not actually employed by anyone, so those like don't really i mean i wasn't a veteran i appreciate veterans day and memorial day but they're not like holidays in the sense that i'm off work or anything they're just an, a normal day except for you know whatever remembering but your lack of enthusiasm for arbor day irks me should be out planting a tree something do something for the environment dan I'm shushing you. I know for those of you listening later on, I'm shushing Bobby at the moment. Um, <laughs> Got muted on a two-person podcast. We do need to use the mute button a little more for sure. Um, well, let's transition. How have your teams been doing? Um, how, is, how is the state of, of summer baseball? Are kids getting injured? Do they seem prepared, unprepared? What's, it, the, what's the deal? It is, a, it is an education in Jekyll and Hyde baseball we you go what does that mean we just some games are some games are just clean a lot of strikes thrown balls being hit in you know two to one three to two games and then there's games that are the opposite where it's 17 18 to one one team's walking everybody one team's making a ton of errors don't know where the ball is supposed to go it's like you don't know what you're going to get day to day, even with good teams, like even with what I would consider the either teams that we're playing that we know are, are good teams or are better teams. It's just a it's just a, a day to day. Every single you don't know what you're going to get when you show up, especially with. Isn't that guys. youth baseball all the time, though? No, I, it's it's not not from not from the experience that I'm talking about. It's I'm talking more like. Like it's, there's no in between. There's no like, oh, well, the team's just getting hits and like we're throwing strikes or getting hits and it's, you know, eight to seven. There haven't been any of those games. It's been either a ton of walks and we just, which is the most boring game you've ever been to, or there's been a ton of strikes thrown and the hitters are just totally off. They can't, they can't touch anything. And it's a, the lowest scoring game the like guys that tournament companies love because the game's moving fast it hasn't been like a normal baseball there hasn't been many normal baseball games it's it's total extremes so far this summer either hitters are just absolutely just no timing whatsoever pitchers have no feel for the strike zone guys in the guys on defense either making every play or literally no plays that's it's like it feels right yeah you flip a coin and just that's what you're going with that day so I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's typical to youth baseball. It's typical to summer baseball, but unfortunately it's, it, it's just, so, it's so tough to watch, especially when you're getting the, the really bad part of the spectrum of walks. I'm getting a text message right now. As we speak, we have a, we have a high school game going on and our coach just texted me and said five straight walks. It's like, that's just, tough. What do you, it's tough to watch. It's tough to, it's tough to coach with because there's kids aren't in shape. Like kid, you can't keep a kid out there for five innings this summer. 
You just can't do it. He's got to go two, three innings. You got to get a new guy in there. So if one guy's on Donnie whole staff summer, it's tough. It's tough. It's, and it's, it's not even about winning. Like summer's not about winning. It's about getting games and getting reps, getting, you know, if you're a high school kid, getting seen, if you're a youth guy, learning the game, playing the game, especially this summer. And you, you can't do that if it's just a carousel of walks. It's hard. Yeah. Walks are the worst thing ever as a coach in youth baseball. They just like, you can feel your soul draining out of your body. It's brutal. That's how I always felt. Just like a good grief. Um, yeah, I can imagine that's that makes sense to me. Have you seen? Are they playing? Are they playing baseball in DC? I, I I've been to DC a few times. I can't ever remember walking past a park with a baseball field. No, there's nothing in this. Well, there's not nothing. There's there's one near me. Um, there's one in Howard University area. I have not seen any baseball being played there. But then again, I'm not like out there at 10 a.m. on a Saturday or 2 p.m. on a Saturday. I'm right. elsewhere. I'm not I'm not at any of the baseball fields. Uh, the Nationals Youth Academy is across the way, but I'm pretty sure they're still closed. They're pretty far over in um, the poor areas over in like Ward 7, 8. It's really far away from where I am. Um, and then a lot after that, it just like starts to get into the suburbs. Like in, in D.C. proper, there's not much because real estate's so expensive. So like Georgetown, GW, they don't play on their campuses. They both play. Uh, Georgetown plays in Bethesda, Maryland, which is up – um it's it's like a still close-ish suburb but it's definitely not anywhere near campus like walking mm. distance and then uh gw plays up in arlington they have a little ballpark so yeah i mean i'm not it's just it's too metropolitan i mean there's not that many baseball fields in chicago except like in humboldt park and in where else i mean i don't know i mean there's some softball fields down near the near the monuments um near where Thomas Jefferson, I guess, resides. But I don't think that's where they play a lot of youth baseball. Although I could be wrong. I should probably go down there this weekend to see what's up. Yeah. Scope out the landscape. Get a little feel for it. Well, there's no, there's no like, place for an outsider at, at the moment. I mean, I guess maybe there could be. But um, I applied to volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club, but I haven't heard back from them. Um, I might do the same with the Nationals Youth Academy. I'm just – I need to figure it out because – they uh are it's really hard for me to access that place without a car it's a really Scooter. tough like long no it's way far way too far and it's also there's some really rough rough neighborhoods where that's probably not the the right thing to do so physically getting over there is difficult um but i'll probably explore that at some point um but like this is that's what's been weird for me personally with this whole thing is that i was planning on folding myself into society and trying to figure out what real life looks like because i've never really done that and no, um not this year you're not it's not been possible yeah i was gonna like join like a writer's club and just like do things that i think normal people maybe do i don't really know plant a tree uh, on arbor day but now that's really yeah no that's really possible so we'll see but for now well, just just got kicking podcasting it. just kicking it just podcasting yeah just just stuck in these four walls talking with Bobby Stevens. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's a living nightmare every day I get out of bed. What a nightmare it is. Um, you, you, well, you'd be so lucky to... to I, I was voted co-host of the year by the listeners. By Malort, MalortVotes.com? I'm still waiting for my... For, you know, they haven't gotten back to me in a while about our sponsorship. Gotcha. It's coming, though. Is it has, it? To, it is has it? to be coming. Is it? Um, well, Bob, any closing thoughts for today? We had a, we had a, a, a very scattershot episode, which is fine. Um, we've got a guest for Friday. Should be fun. We've got some more guests in the pipeline for the following couple weeks. Um, closing thoughts. I just, uh, my closing thoughts are Harvard is an absolute, just, I don't know if it's a pyramid scheme. It's something, it's something that's totally not worth $50,000. And I'm, it's malarkey. It. Yeah. I'm it's upset hogwash. about it. But if you're willing, if you've got the money to pay it, God bless. That's I'll teach God you bless. 50 grand. I'll teach you for half that. I'll give you online God courses. Bless. You could be a pod, you could be a Zoom contributor on this podcast for half of that. We won't even we won't even charge you half. 20 G's the whole year. 
you could be on this podcast and get the knowledge of Arbor Day. We talk Mount Rushmore, Old Bay. What do we, I mean, what more, I, what do kids need nowadays? I feel like we've covered every base today that you would want to cover in a full year of Harvard. And you got it on one podcast. We won't even charge 20 grand. Wow. I'm sold. Yeah. Wow. This was really enlightening. Um, well, thanks for listening. I'm going to sign us off. So we don't ramble anymore. Um, appreciate you putting up with us. Please leave us a review on iTunes, even if it's terrible. And, uh, we will see you here next week on the morning or Friday on the morning brushback.